Hey y'all, N4H and H here with the Yaesu FT710. I want to show you a little bit about split mode uh, with this particular radio. It works differently than it does in uh, the FTDX10 and, and for that matter um, the FTDX5000 MP that I have. Um, a little bit different with this radio, so let me show you. That. In fact, what prompted this, there's a he's taking a break right now, but I heard a DX station earlier and he's working split. He's transmitting on 7.168, and then he'll say listening up 5 to 10, and sometimes he just says he's listening up 5. And that is typical, listening up 5 for sideband. If they say listening up, they're typically going to be listening up 5 kilohertz, um, which in this case would be 7.173 um, for sideband. Now, if you're listening to a CW station who says that he is listening up, that is typically one kilohertz up, although they'll vary all over the place. 1.4, 1 1.8, 1 2.1, 1.7. Um, and I've shown you in some other videos how to figure out where they are using your TXW if you have a um, radio like this with dual VFOs but not simultaneous dual receive. Or if you do have simultaneous dual receive, you can actually just go use your second receiver to uh, go find where they're um, listening. And when I say where they're listening, find where the people are transmitting who are getting through, okay? So let's talk about split mode with this rig. The split button is right up here on top. Right up here on top. Let me see if I can get the camera over there so you can see that. Split right there. All right, and uh, so I'm going to, he says he's listening up. That, By the way, that's why I wanted you to see this. Um, so listen to him a minute. Now on the other radios that I mentioned, all you have to do for split operation to engage it is you just long press your split button, okay? But on this radio, that doesn't have an effect. The way the instructions will tell you to do split with this radio is um, pick a VFO in this case. So I'm going to receive on VFO A. It's set to the receive frequency of the gentleman that I'm listening to who's working DX. Then I'm going to hit the AB key so that I'm now on the BVFO and I'm going to move it to 7.173 because he said he was listening up 5. So 7.168 plus 5K, whoops, went too far, is 7.173. So that's the frequency that I want to transmit back to him on. Now I'm going to go to the dummy load so you can watch this work without me actually transmitting. All right, now... To enter split, split mode, by the way, you notice the color change here. Um, let me zoom out. The color LEDs on the um, outside of the uh, exterior, I should say, of the VFO knob. See, they switch to green. That's because I now am on VFO B. I have it up in the top as my primary. Let me move back over here so you can see. So VFOB is up here in the primary. So I'm going to toggle the AB again. So that puts me back to blue, which is VFOA, in the primary. So I'm going to transmit now with VFOB. So notice the frequency here, 7.173. Now I need to enable split mode, which all I do is tap split. And you'll see the uh, LED goes to um, red which it'll be red if you're working split or if you're using the clarifier, by the way, which for those of you who are new to Yesu, clarifier is um, like receive incremental tuning is on some of the other brands of radios. Now notice the color change here. It's letting me know in green that I'm receiving on 7.168, 7.168. Now I'm gonna, while I'm in split mode now, I'm gonna long press split and it'll let me know that I'm going to be transmitting. See the red there? I'm going to be transmitting on 7.173. All right. And again, receiving on 7.168, transmitting on 7.173. And you see the little green RXLSB, TXLSB. You got the green and red indicators there as well. Oh, let me show you a, a neat little trick. If you're, you know, I don't know what the chances are of this happening. But let's say you work this guy and there's another one up the band who's also working a split. You can press the DSP knob here while turning the dial, while in split mode now. And look, 
the frequencies track together. So I can move up. Let's say there was somebody that posted that they were operating a split on 7.175. Okay, now let go. So now I'm, I'm receiving on 7.175, transmitting on 7.180. By pressing the, the, the step MCH DSP knob while rotating the VFO. You see, these compact radios, the, the buttons and knobs have to serve multiple purposes. All right, but I'm going to go back down, holding that knob, that button in and, and rotating to where I'm on 7168. And yes, by the way, I changed the display to move in 10 hertz increments instead of 20. Um, tuning, see, on the, I went fast. Let me show you where I went. Operation setting and then um, tuning. See over here, tuning. And then the very first option, see it's normally moving in 20 hertz increments. I changed it to 10. Uh, just, I don't know, just because I could and I'm used to 10. All right, <clears throat> so now we're ready to go with split mode. I think it would have been cool if Yesu had given us a a little indicator down here, you know, maybe, a, I don't know, some kind of arrow or something to let us know, hey, by the way, you're now on that VFO while you transmit, but they didn't. Um, but look at the bandwidth change in four H and H. Now, let me show you something. When I'm trying to break a DX pileup, I will probably go into radio setting mode SSB and come down to the, there we go, to the TX BPF select. And I might go to 400 to 2600 on that. 400, 2600 N4 H and H testing, testing. Um, because I want to have a more narrow, okay, so if you haven't watched my video on power spectral density, it's called, the video's name is power spectral density, and then the word huh with a question mark, I believe it's in the playlist called Learning Ham Radio. Uh, so what I wanted to do there was I wanted to pack a little bit more watts per hertz, okay, just to put it real simple. So I'm compressing my audio down to, a, to occupy 400 hertz to 2600 hertz. <clears throat> That'll give a little more punch uh, for working the DX station. N4 H and H testing. All right, I'm going to go back to the antenna and see if this guy's back. Doesn't appear to be back yet. So while while he's not back yet, let me show you another little twist. Press the function button again. This is all pertaining to operating in split mode, and you're going to see a menu option here called TXW. Now this exists on the FTDX 10 as well, but it was one of those buttons that was crowded around the VFO. In this rig, um, you can't just reach over there and touch a button. You got to go into the menu and, and select it. And you'll notice now that your function knob is now going to be set to TXW. Now what that is, is that is a temporary, if you will, uh, way for you to listen <clears throat> to the frequency you're transmitting on. So if you want to verify that there are actually let's say that the people that are getting through to this guy who's working split are indeed transmitting five kilohertz up, then you can long press, and now you see what it did? As long as I'm holding that down, I'm now listening to my transmit frequency. Let go, and I'm back to normal operation. Now, honestly, I'll tell you where that would mostly come in handy. When, uh, when it's a CW split, and they say they're working up, you know, and generally that's considered to be 1K, but they'll be all over the place, 1.1, 1.4, 1.7, 2.1. I've seen one even more than that. Um, so what you want to do is you want to you want to hunt. You want to go, you hold down TXW, and then you can move around in there and see if you can find the people that are sending that and the, that he's responding to, and then you have found the sweet spot, as I call it, so that's what your TXW is for, for when you're working a split. Kind of cool. Well, he hasn't come back yet, uh, but I'll tell you what. Let me recap real quick, because if you're coming off another rig, you're, you're accustomed to holding down split and having it automatically set all this up. In the FT710, you will have to go through that procedure I showed you in the, earlier in the video. Tap the A slash B button, set up your receive side in VFO A, set up your transmit in VFO B separately from being in split see just a now i'm on vfob i use the vfo to set it to 
five kilohertz up from where I'm gonna be listening, because this will be my transmit frequency, A, B again, and I'm gonna set it to the receive frequency. And then when I go into split, um, I now see the little green for the receive frequency, the red for the transmit. And if you hold down split, see, it's going to light green for the receive frequency just to indicate, hey, this is the frequency you're listening on. And then if you hold it again, it's going to light red for the frequency you're going to be transmitting on. Okay? And um, to, to finish split, you just tap, and you're done. And again, remember, the LEDs on each side of the VFO are going to indicate that you're in split, okay? Remember, if you're not in split, they're blue for a VFO A, green for VFO B, all right? And then if you're using the clarifier, you get a red, all right? And you also, if you're using the uh, split, you are gonna get a red, all right? So uh, the final thing was function knob TXW and then that's going to now be the, the control you're going to get with the function knob when you long press it. And that's going to allow you to listen to your transmit frequency, which is the 5 kilohertz up that the DX station said, you know, he was listening, listening up 5K. Well, this way you can long press. And now you're temporarily, as long as you're holding that knob in, you're listening to the transmit frequency so you can verify, yeah, those that's where the other stations are that are getting through to him. And again, that's more important with CW because they don't always listen exactly 1K up. Remember, the standard for CW, if they say listening up, 1K. The standard for sideband, if they say they're listening up, 5K. Um, okay, so I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Um, I hate it that he took a dinner break and you didn't get to see me work the split, but hey, I wanted to give you an opportunity to see uh, the split operation, that's the important aspect of, the, of this video, and, and um, getting down here, turning the rig on, hearing a guy working split, you know, sparked me to go ahead and say, hey, you know what, let me cover split with this radio, because it works differently in the 710 than it does in the FTDX10, FTDX101s, etc. So, hopefully, uh, this will help you out if you're a DX chaser, and you're out there, you know, where these guys typically do uh, if, if you're going to hear somebody working split, it's going to almost always be a DX station. Okay, so I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Zoomed out a little bit there so you can get a good view of the rig. If you pan over a little bit, you can see the speaker and, uh, and everything. And, uh, of course, you see below it the FTDX-10. Um, yeah, nice little radio. You know, no radio is perfect. I've pointed out some of the things in this one I would like to see better. They've already made some improvements. Uh, with some firmware updates and hopefully there will be more to come uh, so I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and found it helpful for you who you know if you, in case you run across a situation where uh, a DX station is working a split I hope you can remember this video uh, maybe jot down some notes or, or uh, maybe put uh, you know add it to your bookmarks and you can come back to it and say hey let me refresh my memory on how to work a split with the ft710 because again it does work differently uh, than in the other yesu radios in the lineup so uh, this one you gotta you know it's cool i love the visuals but you gotta follow the directions and use it the way they intend you to with the particular uh, firmware that is in the 710 so I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Uh, I want to thank the Patreon support team who bring these videos to you. They help offset the cost of maintaining this channel and uh, helping me justify the time to come down here, shoot these videos, edit them, upload them, and, uh, and pay for the storage and everything else and the editing tools. So hey, hats off to the Patreon support team who make these videos possible. Literally, they do. So if you'd like to join that team, there are three levels of participation, a small monthly donation. You can jump in and out anytime. Uh, there are some perks for the executive and VIP levels. Uh, if you want to join, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. That's patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. And if you would, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. If you do subscribe, be sure to click that notification bell so you won't miss another video. I generally upload a couple of weeks, sometimes more if there's important news I want to share. And finally, if you would, uh, share a link to this video on social media, text message, email, or phone a friend. Hey, thanks for watching, and 73 from N4HNH.